So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 subject test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Four, if a point x, y is in the second quadrant, which of the following must be true? And we got three facts that we have to evaluate. Um, let's draw, all right, so we got ourselves a graph here. x, y is in the second quadrant. So first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So in the second quadrant, it's got to be somewhere over here. That's our point. Is it true that x is less than y? Well, if this is the x-coordinate and this is the y-coordinate, x is going to be negative, right? Because it's on the left side of the y-axis. This is positive x to the right and positive y up. So x is negative and y is positive. And that's always going to be true anywhere in the second quadrant. All points in the second quadrant have negative x values and positive y values. So 1 is definitely true. Now, as soon as you know some information with these types of problems, you can start eliminating choices. If you know 1 is in, then only A, D, and E are candidate choices because B and C do not include 1. So we can eliminate those right away, which means, and, I, and we're going to finish this, but even if you're not sure about 2 and 3, right, if you should look at these and not be able to figure out which it is, you should still guess whether it's A, D, or E because mathematically you've now eliminated two choices you went from having a 1 in 5 chance on a random guess to a 1 in 3 chance. And if we run the numbers, you'll, you'll see that it's actually worth it to guess in these situations. But, you know, best case scenario, you don't have to guess because you know enough from what they've, what they've told us. x plus y is greater than 0. Um, well, let's just pick a value for this point. What could this be? This point could be like negative 3, 3, right? So in that case, x plus y is 0. So x plus y isn't greater than 0. So 2 isn't always true. By the way, for something to always be true, it's hard to prove. You really have to think about all the possible counterexamples. And if you can't find any, then it's probably always true. But if you can think of even one counterexample to why something isn't true, that's enough to disprove it. So this one example, negative 3, 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, that invalidates number 2. And that's all it took was one example to do that. Just a general point here, if you have a line with a slope of negative 1 that includes that point, anywhere below that line, you're going to get values of x that are more negative than y is positive. Like, just for example, you could get like negative 4, 2. In such a case, the magnitude of x and how negative it is outweighs how positive y is, which is to say that their sum will be negative which will invalidate this. Any point that we might pick up here, like say a 2, 4, y is, no, sorry, negative 2, 4, right? Because it's still in the second quadrant. y is more positive than x is negative. So in that case, y will outweigh x and you will get a positive result. So you can't just pick one point. You've got to think of a few different situations and play around with it. Um, anyway, more information. Now we can eliminate more stuff. We can throw out d at this point. And 3, x over y is less than zero. So is that always going to be true? Well, we know that anywhere in the second quadrant, x is always going to be negative, y is always going to be positive. So the quantity x over y is always going to be a negative over a positive, which can only ever be negative, which is to say that it's less than zero. So 3 is in, and e is the best choice. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, Drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.